This happened just a few months ago. I live alone in a house in what I would describe as an average neighborhood. One night, I was by myself in the living room, just relaxing and watching TV. It was 11 Rao at night when I heard my phone vibrate. The specific vibration it does when I receive a text. I was curious so I picked up my phone to look. When I did, I saw that a new number that I didn't know had texted me. The text said, Hey, I'm outside. This seemed bizarre right off the bat. I figured right away that it was a wrong number, and I thought about replying, but I didn't end up doing it. I just tossed my phone aside and forgot about it, but maybe just ten minutes later or so, I was watching TV but thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. My living room is at the front left side of the house, there's a side window looking outside, and some bushes are by it. Something moved out there, so I looked over. I saw what looked like a person walking past the window, but I saw no details about them because it was dark out and a long ways away. In fact, I only saw them for about a split second. I wasn't even 100% sure about it. Maybe I was just being paranoid, but it looked like somebody passed by the window. Now I suddenly started thinking about the text again. Could it not have been just a wrong number, but somebody actually at my house? Who would be here though and why? I had no clue. I decided then to text the number back and ask them who they were. When I did, they responded rather quickly, probably less than a minute later. This text said, come outside and see. Now I was really creeped out. I had a feeling that somebody was outside of my house for some reason. I got up from the couch and looked out of the front window. My front yard appeared empty. I closed the shades, then I went all around to different windows in the house. I went to the sides and the back as well, but everywhere I looked, I saw nothing. Of course, there were several places around the yard where somebody could hide without being seen. I had no idea where this person was. I walked back into my living room and just as I did, heard a knock coming from one of the back windows. Instantly, I had a bad feeling about it. I walked back over to the dining room where a window that looked out to the backyard was. Whoever had knocked on the window was now gone. I looked all around back there but saw nothing. I then went back into the living room and texted the person back, asking them why they were at my house. The person texted back quickly once again. This time they said, come outside and I will show you, or do I have to break in? I texted back saying that I was calling the police, then I proceeded to do so. I told the 911 operator that somebody was threatening to break into my house and I had reason to believe that they were on my property. I was told that officers would be there in a few minutes. Then I just waited and hoped that the person wouldn't actually try to break in. Meanwhile, I wasn't getting any more texts from the number. I thought about texting them again but decided not to. Only like five minutes later, the police arrived. I saw the cars out front and I went outside and talked to them. They searched my property and all around my house, but unfortunately, they didn't locate anyone. But as the police were still there, I got another text from the number. It said, I can see the police there lol. I showed it to the police, and they looked around the street a little but couldn't see anyone. They looked around for probably 20 more minutes. The person was never found. After that, they left. I was really creeped out by this, but luckily and surprisingly, I didn't get any more texts. I also didn't see any more creepy things outside. Looking back, I still don't know who it was. Sometimes I think that maybe it was one of my neighbors. That seems sort of far-fetched, though. I still wonder about... Last year, I had a strange experience. I was at home one night alone in my apartment. Out of nowhere, I got a text message from some random number. I clicked on it and there was a picture. The picture was a screenshot of my Facebook profile. I found this to be strange. I didn't know who was sending this to me or why, so I responded to the text asking who this was. I never got a reply though, and soon forgot about it. Now, several nights later, it was a similar situation where I was by myself at home. I got another random text, and when I looked, it was from the same number. This time, it was another image, 
and it was a screenshot of a photo of my apartment complex. I didn't know what to make of this either. I responded once again asking who this was that was texting me. I did not immediately get a reply. At this point, I was thinking that it was just some kind of a prank. I went into a group chat that I had with friends and asked if anybody was responsible. Each of them denied it, and I really believed them. I mean, it just didn't seem like something that they would do. I wanted it to be one of them, though, because it was kind of creeping me out. Then, that very same night, I received another text message from the same number. As soon as I heard the phone text noise, I had a bad feeling. When I looked, it was another picture. This one was a screenshot of what looked like a news story, but this news story had to be fake. It said, Michigan man beaten unconscious. Then there was a picture of me below the title. The picture of me was taken from either my Facebook profile or my Instagram. This was really alarming. Now, was this their kind of way of threatening me with violence? Maybe this all was supposed to be threatening. They knew who I was, they knew where I lived, and now apparently I was going to be beaten unconscious. I didn't respond to this message either. I didn't know what to say. That very same night, I went to bed at the usual time. I was a little bit concerned and confused by the whole thing, but I didn't really think that it was that serious. It was probably just a prank of some kind. But that all changed. I was awoken that night suddenly by the sound of loud bangs on my front door. I got up and went out of my bedroom into the living room. There, the sound was much louder. I went over to the door and looked to the other side. There I saw a man standing there, hitting the door with some kind of object. I couldn't make out the guy's face well at all because he was mostly looking down. I didn't want to stay there by the door, and I backed away from it. It seemed like the man might actually break in. I went into my bedroom, closed the door, and locked it, and then called the police. Meanwhile, the guy kept banging on my door. Probably less than a minute after I got off the phone with the police, I heard a really loud noise. It seemed like the door was breaking. The next thing I knew, I heard footsteps inside. I moved to the back corner of my bedroom. The footsteps walked around, and then within a minute, seemed to head straight for my bedroom. I heard them get to the end of the hallway, and my heart was racing. Then, he tried opening my bedroom door, which was locked, and then banging started on this door. I knew it wouldn't hold up for long. Eventually, if he was able to break my front door, he would be able to break this door. I grabbed the blankets from my bed and hid underneath them, not knowing what else to do. The guy was banging on the door for probably like two or three minutes. Then finally the police got there. It was great timing. After they entered my apartment, they were able to get the man. He was arrested for breaking into my place and I pressed charges against him. The crazy thing is that I had no idea who he was. I had never seen him before that I was aware of. I never found out how he got my number or address or anything. It remains the scariest experience that I've ever had. This happened just a few months ago. I'm a female and my name is Jessica. This occurred two years ago. Now, one day I got a new text on my phone and it said, Hey, is this Jessica? I didn't know who it was, but it possibly could have been somebody that I knew. I responded, saying yes, and asked who it was that was texting me. The person said that his name was JT, and that was it. I didn't know a JT, and I tried to think of anybody that I knew with those initials. I couldn't think of anyone, though. I texted back, saying, Do I know you? JT responded by asking if he could come over. This was getting weirder and weirder, so I texted back this JT guy, and asked him how he knew me. When I said that, he didn't respond. I was very confused by this whole thing, so clearly this guy had the right number and knew who I was, but I had no clue as to who he was. I worked in the city and lived in a pretty populated area about 10 minutes away. I saw lots of people on a daily basis, but I was positive that I did not know this guy, and it was kind of weird that he seemed to know who I was. After he didn't answer my question to how he knew me, it was even more suspicious. So, after that, I blocked him. I didn't hear from him for the rest of the night.
The next day, I got up and went to work as usual. Like I said, I worked in the city, so I would park my car on the street and then walk to the office. Everything was going normal for the workday. When it got to be about an hour or so until I was off, I checked my phone. There was another new text on it from a different new number. This text said, Why did you block me? Of course I knew who this was right away. It had to be that JT guy. I asked him why he kept texting me. JT said that he had been trying to text me and nothing was going through. Then he realized that he was blocked. He said that he just wanted to talk to me. Then he said, I'm waiting for you at your car right now. I know you get off of work soon. He was right, but how did he know this? I had no clue. I blocked this number as well. I was hoping that it was some sort of crazy joke or something, but I knew that likely it wasn't. When I got off of work that day, I left the office and was very careful. What if this JT guy actually was at my car and still there? I walked back to my car, which took just a few minutes. I got within view of it, but was still a long ways away. There was this man standing near it on the sidewalk. I stopped where I was and kept watching him. I was trying to determine whether this was just some random guy or if it was JT. The guy wasn't walking away and just looking around. I did not recognize him. Then he looked over into my direction, and I saw him make eye contact with me. I looked away, but then I saw him start to walk over to me. He was a long ways away, but I knew that I needed to get out of there. I started walking down the sidewalk in the opposite direction as quickly as I could. I made it a few blocks and then saw a grocery store and walked inside of it. I was hoping that JT hadn't seen me go in. There was a decent amount of people out walking on the sidewalks and stuff, so there was a chance he didn't. I walked around in the grocery store for a few minutes, looking around. I wasn't really sure what to do. I was hoping not to see JT anywhere, but then I saw a police officer who just happened to be inside of the grocery store. I approached the officer and told him about my situation. He said that he could walk to my car with me and see if JT was still out there. So, we left the grocery store, and I kept my eyes out for JT, but we didn't see him at all. Thankfully, I made it back to my car safely, and then was able to drive home. I was glad that I made it back. However, JT had still gotten away, and still knew where I worked. I just hoped that he didn't know where I lived. I lived in an apartment up on the fifth floor. During this time, it was a pretty typical one-bedroom place. That night, at about 10 p.m., there was a knock on my door. I knew who it was right away. It had to be JT. I instantly took out my phone and called the police. I didn't even bother to look out to the peephole or anything. I was that confident. A few minutes later, he knocked on the door again. I didn't answer. Then, I got yet another text on my phone. This was from another new number. It said, Open up the door. I know you're home. I didn't reply to it. I just hoped that the police would get there soon, and that JT would not try to break in. About ten minutes went by. I was in my bedroom, listening closely for any sounds. JT didn't knock anymore or anything. I figured that he probably left. But suddenly I heard some voices from the hallway. I realized that the police must have arrived. I went to the door and looked out. And sure enough, they were there. But JT was also there. He was talking to them, and they got him to go away. I also got a restraining order against him. And thankfully, after that night, I haven't seen him since. I also haven't received any more texts from him.